Oh, that has got to be the hardest descent I've done in a long time. Oh, I'm really struggling to catch my breath. <laughs> but my obsession with the Ogwen Valley continues. And you can see why I made the climb. <clears throat> so Trevan, sunset. Um, the reason it's tough is I'm on the slopes of Peniarol Wen. Well, there's the peak up there. And it's more or less vertical. So my car is parked down there. It's more or less vertical. So you kind of hand over feet <clears throat> coming up with the camera gear on the back. Oh. Tough. But I mentioned in my previous video that I had a shot in mind, and this is it. So up, looking down onto Clean Ogwin with the road <clears throat> and Trivan uh, and the last uh, rays of sun. Actually, what I'm waiting for is the sun to have gone down enough uh, for cars to put the lights on, because then I'd like to get the streak of headlights coming along here. Uh, but uh, this is what I'm playing at so far. What am I doing there? So, just trying to make the most of that last bit of sun on Trevan. It's nice, nice light, nice bit of blue sky above the clouds. I'm going to do two exposures there, one for the mountains and one for the snow. And then I can blend those together. Uh, so this is the kind of precursor <clears throat> to getting those lights. Um, but it's going to be a while before that happens, so I'm just enjoying the view. Uh, well, that's pretty special, isn't it? Right, going to try and get my breath back. Got my breath back a bit, just in time for some nice light on uh, Trevan. So, sorry, swinging you around to show you. I've got a uh, portrait on this one, and quite a simple composition. Got uh, Trevan right in the centre. Uh, Clin Ogwin is in Marula Thirds. Summit of Trevan is kind of on Marula Thirds, but you know, these things aren't that precise. But nice cloudage. <laughs> just, made, just made a word, but I've uh, made a word up. But I've done, um, in fact, I'll, I'll do that as well. Just um, taking a portrait landscape shot. Um, so. One with Trevan, uh, and then uh, Glidervac, and then Egribben, uh, and then you go. Uh, Glidervaud, and Devil's Canyon, and Clunidwell. So they're known as the Glidders, or the Glidders. Um, but it's nice cloud, nice lights. Look at that light, that's, that's beautiful light. Um, but just trying to get that scene in there. It's a bit bright to shoot that way at the moment, so too much of a contrast. I've dropped, um, uh, graduated filtering just to balance up uh, the snow so you can see the snow is quite bright here up there with the light um, so I've dropped in graduated filter just to take the brightness off the, the top of the snow uh, and the clouds because uh, you can tell that there's a cause there's a band of brightness where the snow is and then a band of darkness where the, the mountains are um, but it's pretty special <laughs> I'm glad I made the climb, I didn't suffer from too much of a uh, kind of breathless experience, although it was quite tough. Um, so <clears throat> it's kind of a, a, a double bonus because I was coming up just to get set up for, not to be pitch black, because uh, I, I don't think I'm wait, gonna wait for it to be pitch black, but just dark enough to get the light to the cars because I like the fact that the road runs kind of alongside the lake uh, between me and uh, Trevan. So, sun's almost down behind the mountains. So, hopefully that works, but yeah, I think what I've got in the bag so far is pretty good, and some nice light down in the valley there as you head down towards um, Capacurig. Well, not bad, not bad at all. A wonderful light on Trevan, look, I, just look at that. Just, just a salmony pink colour. So the sun is just kind of down um, over the kind of, but I think it's just about clearing the top. And just get, oh, look at that. Look at that. So, you know, you probably have to wait. You probably have to wait until I process these 
images to appreciate that, but that is just orgasmic. <laughs> Not quite, maybe. Um, but that, just, that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Just spectacular. God, I wonder if there's anybody up there. It's a quite, quite popular uh, peak to get up to a van, so might, might be people up there enjoying the snow. But that is, so uh, <laughs> my composition, uh, I'll, I'll talk you through the composition. I've got Trevan right on the reel of thirds, intersection of reel of thirds there, and then I've got uh, Clear Nogren on one of the other intersections. So hopefully there's a nice counterpoint between the two, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it, it makes sense to me. Um, but the composition is one thing. But look at that coming out, look at that coming out, just... Oh, yay. That is top notch. That is absolutely, I was gonna say out of this world, but it's not out of this world. It's, it's, <laughs> it's in this world. And I'm getting the opportunity to see it. Just, so looking that way is, you know, so it's, it's, it's not bad because there's that nice color in the sky. But that is just, it's, I think, one of the reasons I think the uh, Ogwin Valley is so popular is, You've got that Trevan dominating uh, kind of the end of Clin Ogwin. And when there's snow on it or when there's sun on it, it just looks, <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of a word to describe it other than <laughs> uh, But uh, one of the things I was gonna talk about is how do you expose for that type of image? So how would you expose for that? So you've got to trust your eyes. So the camera's not that clever. So when I'm looking, you, you, I, I forget about focus because I've pre-focused on, on Trevan. That's the exposure box. That white box moving around now is the exposure box. And it's, it's taking, I am taking a reading off the light on Trevan. But the camera's not that clever. The camera doesn't know what I'm looking at. The camera, you know, works in binary, digital, jiggery pokery. Um, <clears throat> the camera is not that clever. You've got to trust your eyes. So look at the image look at the scene and think where's the contrast <clears throat> what am i aiming for if i just expose for the sunlight on trevan it's going to give me an image that is too dark so i'm exposing on trevan and and look it's try it's trying to expose for that brightness but that it's actually it's overexposing trevan and overexposing the light so you've got to trust your eyes and think I need to knock that back a little bit. Just maybe one stop. Just knock it back a tiny little bit. You're cleverer than your camera. So take your exposure reading on what you think will be kind of a dominant part of the image. Whether it's something really bright or something really dark, uh, it depends on the image. But then use your eyes and think about what you're photographing. Uh, and then make the necessary adjustments, whether you need to just knock it back a little bit. And I, when I'm, when I'm th thinking of knocking it back, I'm thinking if that image was now in Lightroom and it come up in my Lightroom and I just exposed for uh, the snow, I would have lost detail somewhere in that image. So I don't like, I've said this before, I don't like spending a lot of time on Lightroom. So try and get it right in the camera. I've, it helps that I've got my filter dropped in just to take some of the, the brightness out. But it also helps that you just think, where's, where's, the, if, where's the problem going to be? That's a, probably a good way of describing it. Where am I going to give myself problems with that image? And then think about kind of how you're creating the image and how you might just need to adjust your exposure a little bit. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Talking to you and uh, missing out on the sunset. Beautiful colours. And it's clean it, it while just uh, reflecting that kind of gold. And then I, did, I made a video up. There's another... Um, it's in that hollow there. There's another, uh, there's another lake called uh, Llyn Bocluid. Uh, I made a film up there and that was quite a climb up. Uh, so, but I, that was probably 12 months ago, if not more. But uh, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just looking at Trevan. There's a nice bit of light on the top, but the clouds aren't as interesting as they were. So I think my previous images, the clouds are a bit better. Uh, but I'll be greedy and take another one. And now I'm just waiting for it to get dark enough. <clears throat> and then I'll uh, come back to you. I'm going to have a drink of soup as well. I'm in danger of sounding like a stuck record, but <laughs> wow, <clears throat> look at that. Um, 
So the reason I've uh, come back to you is because, sorry, that's rude of me, isn't it, to be messing around with the camera rather than talking to you. Um, know when to take your filters out. So I've taken my filter out because now the, the light isn't that strong. It's just an, a nice glow rather than a kind of a pew, bright, in the, bright in the sky stuff. So if I'd left my filter in, I'm then trying to combat my filter rather than my filter working with me. I'm trying to fight against it because uh, it's dark and it was darkening the peak. Um, but obviously the mountains uh, kind of was, was kind of getting kind of more close the, closer to uh, the color of the peak. So I was, I was kind of fighting against my filter to try and get the balance right. So I don't, I don't want to fight against my filter. Um, so I've taken it out because that's just a lovely glow and there's a lovely glow there. There's a lovely glow there. And there's a lovely glow there. And it is, it was very, very cold overnight, but there's not a breath of wind. So, um, nor, you know, normally uh, when I've been down at uh, the top end of uh, Ogwin, the wind is blowing down here and I've been freezing, but actually it's, it's pretty nice. Um, not that cold at all. It's, you know, hovering around zero, but you know, it it's, doesn't feel cold. So what I'm going to do now, I think, is just flip my camera. Do you want to, do you want to stay with me while I do that? Flip my camera. And uh, I'm giving myself difficulty trying to do this one handed. But let's see the things I, the things I do for you. <laughs> so just try and get that lined up. Flip that up a little bit. Get that ooh, one hand. Ooh, it's harder than it looks. I'm tightening that wrong way around. So <clears throat> I've just gone a little bit panoramic, not panoramic, portrait, because I'm loving that. And I just like the idea of getting the whole of the mountain in uh, one shot. Well, I'm pretty pleased. So, <clears throat> the real reason I'm, I'm, I was here, just turn my camera back the other way, so I'm ready, is to get those light trails from the cars. Now, what I need is <clears throat> enough darkness. And uh, if you remember my film from <clears throat> Peak District, uh, it's, it's about getting that balance between bright enough to still see the landscape, dark enough to see the car headlights, but I need one of those cars with the real kind of banging Xenon headlights to come along. And what I'm going to do when I turn off, drink my soup, and I'm going to, I'm going to time a car from that end of the lake to that end, <clears throat> just so I can get an idea of if it takes, I don't know, a minute. I want to aim for a minute exposure because I want to get the car going all the way along because it, it, that really helps. If it just get it kind of halfway, it's not as good. You want the trail all the way along. Uh, I might end up with over a minute's exposure, but I'm going to get my stopwatch out and uh, see how long, if I can see a car. <clears throat> uh, I've not got my glasses, <laughs> so I need to see a car for, <laughs> need to be able to see it to track it, but I'll t time it and uh, see how we're getting on. Can't help, I can't help staring at Trivan. And then look at that. Look at that. I was about to turn off, but look at that. Oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, while I've still got enough light to, uh, for you to see me, hello, um, thought I'd just explain. So, a couple of people have asked in the past, um, I guess because they've been watching other people on YouTube, why I don't use a cable release all the time. Uh, and the honest answer is, because most of the time you don't need to. Um, I see lots of people taking landscape photographs with uh, a, a cable release. This, this is actually, a, um, it doubles up because it's a cable release and an intervalometer. Um, but you see people all the time and, and they've got a shutter speed of kind of like 400th of a second. <laughs> so don't, uh, there's, there's no, uh, uh, above 200th of a second, really, there's, you don't need to worry about kind of camera movements. But anyway, let's buy the bike. Uh, reason I'm using it now is because I'm aiming for 
a shutter speed. Uh, I, I timed the car from the end, from one end to the other, and it was, it was one minute, 28 seconds, uh, to be precise. So I'm, I'm aiming for a shutter speed that's over a minute long. So if I have a minute's exposure and I press the shutter down with my finger manually, the act of touching the camera and taking my finger off the camera introduces even a t tiny bit of vibration. So um, use this. You're not touching the camera. You press it. You don't then drop it because that will kind of pull on the camera as well. And you certainly don't let it leave it swinging around because the wind will blow it. Uh, that's another thing. If it's windy, you can't really do images like this because the whole camera's moving. But you, you hold it, press it, and you're not touching your camera. So you're not introducing any vibration into the camera while you're taking a long shutter speed image. So that's the plan. But uh, the intervalometers for doing uh, kind of uh, time lapse and, and stuff like that, or kind of re repeated images anyway. So I'm just waiting. I I'm, I'm, I'm want to get the balance right of um, getting along enough speed, but also for it to be safe for me to get down. I don't want, don't want it to be pitch black and me trying to kind of scramble down because it is quite vertiginous. That's my word of the day. Vertiginous. Look it up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I've got to entertain myself. I'm, I'm by myself. I've got to entertain myself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty steep. So I want to get the balance right of getting the image, but not kind of falling to like do my head in or something. So just waiting, maybe another, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but I haven't finished my soup yet, but I can, I can see car lights to the naked eye. The challenge is getting the camera to catch them. Um, so let's see how we go. But I'm not going to risk a broken leg. Looks like it's going to be a clear night as well. If I didn't have to go home to watch the Super Bowl, um, maybe I could do some light uh, starlight photography. But I'm going to watch the Super Bowl, hoping that both teams lose because I hate both the Patriots and the Eagles. So any American football fans out there, I hate both of them. <laughs> so be one of those games. You think who can lose? Both. Right. Wait for darkness. The lights are level now where I've got up to about 30 second exposure and I'm just going to try, uh, there's a couple of cars coming along, I'm just going to try taking an exposure now and see what it looks like at 30 seconds. Um, I think I said, did I say 1 minute 28 or something? So it's about a minute slower than getting the car coming the whole way along. But if I do a couple of images at 30 seconds, I might then be able to overlay them onto each other. But uh, I'm doing it more as an experiment to see if the camera's picking up those trails. Um, but that's the, uh, just on cue, the wind has picked up and the uh, temperature's dropped quite considerably. <laughs> but uh, I'm okay. So that's one thirty second. If I get two thirty seconds, it will probably get, depends how quickly the car's traveling, obviously. Uh, but it might get the kind of the, the trail from the one car all the way along. So. Let's wait for that to finish and then we'll have a look on the back of the camera what, it, what it's looking like. But if, uh, if you're ever driving down the Ogrin Valley <laughs> and you see me up here in the night time, put your full beam on, do us a favour. <laughs> so let's see, it's almost... There we go, time's up. Let's have a look, see how that came out. Is it picking up the light yet? I don't think it is. Oops. No, not quite dark enough yet, I don't think. Sorry, I'm just looking at the at the image and I don't think it's dark enough yet to... It's picking it up a little bit, but nothing to write home about. So I'm going to persevere a little longer, maybe give it another 10 minutes or so, and then I'm heading, heading down. Um, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of cars coming, so I might try it when there's like there's almost a queue of cars. You probably won't be able to see that, but I can see a lot of headlights coming, so I might try it when there's a lot of cars coming down the valley and try and get them all going at once. Well, I hope you can see me. I'm using my head torch um, just to shine a bit of light, so probably not the uh, most flattering I've ever seen, but uh, you can see it's absolutely pitch black now. Made a good decision to come down when I did. It was, it was getting just dark enough to make it a little bit tricky, so I don't think I was in any danger, but another 10 or 15 minutes and I kind of would have struggled. I used my head torch to, to find my way down a bit, 
uh, and I'm back at the car and if you I'll, I'll move out of the way I'll move <laughs> you can see let's go let's go for a wonder so there's, there's my car with the lighting but you won't be able to see a thing it's absolutely pitch black amazing stars absolutely amazing stars and I tried a little bit of star photography um, but uh, I've never done it before uh, so it was a bit of an experiment see how that goes but um, uh, it's time to go home so I uh, hope, <laughs> hope you can still see me hope you enjoyed the trip uh, not sure the light trails worked but you know I think I've got some good images of, uh, of, of the sun on the snow on the top of Trevan so quite happy with that and uh, always happy for comments and thumbs up and all that type of stuff and uh, I'll see you on the next one cheers bye Thank you.